What is sacred stone therapy? It is Ayurvedic bodywork, which uses heated sea stones and copious amounts of aromatic, medicated warm oils to smooth out tight muscles, increase blood flow, remove negative energy, alleviate vata, strengthen the chakras, provide deep penetrating heat, and sedate the central nervous system. It's simply decadent. The sweetness of life is renewed. Everyone who sees this treatment is captivated by the possibility of receiving such a treatment. As Paramahansa Yogananda once said, the emergence of nature, stones, metals, and so forth are the first symbols of God's beauty. Karen Chabot is the founder of Sacred Stone, a healing arts institute based on Ayurvedic principles. She is a licensed and nationally certified body worker and Ayurvedic practitioner. With 18 years of experience in the holistic health industry, she holds postgraduate diplomas from Universal Massage Therapeutics and the Ayurvedic Institute in New Mexico, as well as a bachelor's degree in holistic nutrition and health. Karen is a certified nutritionist, medical Thai therapist, Arya Yoga therapist, and fitness trainer. She's a member of the National Ayurvedic Medical Association and a continuing education provider of the NCB TMB under Category A. Prior to her work with stones, her bodywork was primarily focused on traditional Abhyanga, which is Ayurvedic oil massage. Many days after seeing clients, Karen would rest on the smooth, flat stone cliffs in her backyard to recharge herself. It was like a big hug from Mother Earth, almost better than a massage. The stones healed her and took away her aches and pains. She tried to convince some of her clients to go out on the stones to relieve their pain, but they weren't very receptive to the idea. So Karen decided to bring the stones to her clients instead. She set up crock pots and heated small, smooth stones and laid them on her clients' bodies. The results were profound. Karen is now leading seminars and certification workshops around the country in sacred stone therapy. I love um, when she spins the stones on my spine and then lays them strategically down my back and a warm towel, it just knocks me out, it calms me, um, it's, it's super. The way Karen is able to manipulate the stones depending on your body's needs uh, really helps the individual, especially myself, um, to come out of it feeling renewed, relaxed, and uh, waiting for the next one. I love all of the, of the sacred stone massage that Karen gives. It's just wonderful. It's like you've died and gone to heaven. They make me feel uh, half my age. She's cured my shoulder, and uh, she makes me feel much stronger. She's a gift. She's an angel. It's an experience. Sacred Stone's mission to share the beauty of Ayurveda and they facilitate this receptivity as they are alive with prana, which is the life force. Pra means before, ana means breath. Who would be interested in this type of treatment? People looking to renew the sweetness of life. People looking to release toxins or eliminate excess. People looking for purification and healing. People looking to strengthen and rejuvenate. People looking to maintain balance in their lives. Spa and health club owners may wish to provide this service. Schools may wish to incorporate this into their curriculum. Estheticians may wish to add these sacred techniques to their beauty treatments. Massage therapists may wish to add this to their repertoire. Sacred Stone is located at Whetstone Beach, a private beach off the Rhode Island coastline. Whetstones were stones that people used to sharpen their knives on in the 18th century because these stones in particular are so flat, smooth, and round. They are that way because they've been washed up by the waves, not because they've been mechanically tumbled. Mechanically tumbled stones or polished stones have a weakened electromagnetic field. Their healing capacity is diminished. Polishing a stone can be synonymous with a sunburn. If you can compare the surface of a stone to the skin of a human, you can understand why this mechanical process is weakening. A rough stone can turn into a polished beautiful stone by mechanical accelerated manipulation, but under the exterior of all this vanity, the internal subatomic material of the stone will be damaged. Of course, a stone is not threatened by melanoma or wrinkles, but its precious electromagnetic field and internal essence is at stake. The same electromagnetic circuitry found in stones is present in the human energy field. Studies have shown that stress and disease are connected to positively charged ions. That's why a walk on the beach or at the lake shore can be so uplifting. The air around a body of water is charged with negative ions. So when stones are applied to the body and the energy field, an exchange of virtual protons takes place, increasing negative ions, thereby accelerating the healing process. Don't let the term negative scare you. In this case, negative is a beautiful thing.
To quote from my guru, Dr. Fassant Ladd, the stones are alive, but they're in a sweet coma. Whetstones are metamorphic bedrock, which is ideal for healing purposes. Metamorphic rock has been exposed to high pressure, extreme heat, and chemically active fluids and gases, usually in concert. These stones and other New England stones were spit out from deep within the Earth's core more than 300 million years ago. Some of them are a mixture of metamorphic and granite composition, or hardened clay known as argillite. These are more porous than basalt, or other hard, smooth stones found along inland rivers. Being more porous, they have the ability to absorb negative energy more readily and are extremely healing. Because of their porous nature, these stones can become saturated with toxins and negativity if they are not purified and cleansed daily. They need a rest in the fresh air, the rain and the sun at the end of every week or better yet at the end of every day. They have the energy of the oceanic salt which is purifying to the body and electromagnetic field. These stones act as magnets drawing out repressed emotion and deep sorrow, transforming them if the client is ready for the transformation. Sacred stone therapy is vata pacifying. There are five energetic dynamic directions within the body. The direction that sacred stone therapy pacifies is upana, the downward flow of movement, the flow that connects us to Mother Earth. To quote from an ancient Sanskrit proverb, he or she who adores the prana and the apana thus is not reborn into this world again and he or she is freed from all bondage. What is Ayurveda? It is a Sanskrit word which literally means the science of long life. It is also known as the science of digestion and the science of self-healing. The UN World Health Organization recognizes Ayurveda as one of the top three medical systems in America. Ayurveda heals the root of the disease rather than just alleviating the symptoms. Modalities would include nutritional and lifestyle changes, Ayurvedic massage, herbs, yoga, meditation, mantra, mindfulness, sound, color, crystal, and aromatherapy. This ancient medical system empowers us with information regarding the balance of body, mind, and spirit. It classifies our individual constitutions into three parts, vata, pitta, and kapha. These three parts exist within all of the universe and within the human body. Vata is the energy responsible for movement, circulation, the transport of nervous impulses, and prana, which is the life force. Pitta is the energy responsible for metabolism, digestive fire, transformational processes, enzymatic productivity, and heat. Kapha is the energy responsible for storage, protection, lubrication, mucus, and the production of fats and oils. I'd like to introduce the stones and the equipment. This is an 18-quart turkey roaster. At the bottom of the roaster, I've lined it with a white towel. And I have the stones in a special order, always in the same position, so that it's easier and quicker when I go back and forth between the client and the roaster. The very back of the roaster, I keep my sacrum stone. This goes right under the tailbone. And then I put the belly stone on. And after the belly stone, I put the heart stone on. And this was found just this way in the backyard by my daughter. And after the heart stone, I put the wrist stones on because the hands are connected to the heart. So that the wrists can be supported this way and the shoulders are invited to go back down toward the table. After the wrist stones, I take the rhomboid stones about equal in size and I ask the client to lift their shoulders and I place them under. And then I find my neck stones and I place them on either side of the neck. And after that I come here to my amethyst geode and I have a blue lapis for the throat chakra and I have a amethyst crystal and in this sacred stone massage, I place the crystal so that the point is facing downward, grounding vata.